the shadow of Fu Manchu. Based on the stories by Sax Roma. in London after their partially successful efforts to guard the Reverend Eltham and his household at Redmoat against the cunning of Dr. Fu Manchu, Nayland Smith and Dr. Petrie continue their untiring search for the crafty Oriental who has once more mysteriously vanished in London's dark underworld. Their discussion of Sir Lionel Barton, celebrated Orientalist and explorer, lately returned to England and the probability of his being among those on Fu Manchu's list to be destroyed is interrupted by the arrival of a telegram. With the news that Sir Lionel has just been found murdered. Confound it, Petrie. Why can't we get this murderer? We're going to meet Weymouth at Sir Lionel's house? Of course. A taxi will put us there by the time Weymouth arrives. Come on. Ah, here comes a late prowling cab. Taxi! Number 16, Westerly Road, Finchley Driver, and as quickly as you can. Police business in case you stop. Right, oh, sir. I knew Fu Manchu would reach the line. But that conceited fool would laugh at my warning today. That house of his gave me the creeping shudders. Well, if it's anything like your description, it must be ideal for Fu Manchu's work. Ideal? The sunlight can't penetrate to the rooms. When I got there this afternoon, I thought I was in a jungle. Clouds of gnats floated in and out of the windows. There's a steamy smell about the place that's positively malarious. Reminded me of spots I've seen in Burma. Yeah, difficult to picture here in London. It's the jungle transferred to the British Isles, Petrie. The entire front of the place is covered with a sort of monkey creeper, which is imported from heaven knows where. It has a close, exotic perfume that fits in the picture. Yes, the place was made for murder. And Fu Manchu pursues his way without let or hindrance. Yes, blast it. We mark such and such a man as one alive to the yellow peril. We warn him if we have time. Perhaps he escapes, and perhaps not. And what do we know of those others who may die every week by his murderous agency? We certainly can't know everyone who has read the riddle of the Orient. Well, it's midnight. We should be there presently. Isn't this Finchley Driver? Yes, sir. And we're on Westerly Road. Number 16 is just ahead, sir. Oh, you're right, Neilan. Isolated and ideal for murder. Shall I drive in, sir? Yes, yes, up to the house. There's the place, Petrie the far end of the drive. It's a wilderness. It seems to be banked in by trees and shrubs. Oh, Weymouth must have arrived here before us. There's the police car. Here we are, sir. Shall I wait? Yes. Come on, Petrie. Ah, there you are. Glad to see you, Mr. Smith. Hello, Weymouth. And you, Dr. Petrie. Just arrived myself. We left immediately. We got your telegram, Weymouth. Don't be startled at the appearance of the place, Doctor. I was. It's half a museum. 
The rest is circus and menagerie combined. Well, it certainly is in keeping with the exterior. Here's the library. Great Scott, what's that? <laughs> A young leopard chained outside the window. The place is full of surprises and mysteries. Where is he, Weymouth, and how was it done? I thought perhaps you'd like to hear what led up to it so far as we know before seeing him. Oh, yes, yes. Go ahead. Well, the man you asked for from the yard got here all right and stopped in the road outside where he could watch the gates. About half past ten, a young lady turned up and went in. Woman? Yes, but not the one you have in mind. It was not Karame? It was a Miss Edwards, Sir Lionel's typist. She'd forgotten a purse and came back after it and gave the alarm. My man heard the row from the road and came on the run. He rang us up and I immediately wired you. He heard the row, you say? What row? Miss Edwards went into violent hysterics. Describe what your man saw. An Arab footman, there isn't an Englishman in the house, trying to calm the girl in the hall yonder. A Malay and another Arab were beating their foreheads and bawling. Did your man get anything out of them? Nothing that makes sense. So he started to investigate for himself. The door to the study he found locked from the inside. Yes? Well? He went round to the window, and what he saw accounts for the girl's hysterics. Go on, man, get to the point. Well, amongst the rubbish on the floor, a big mummy case lay on its side... And face down with his arms thrown across it was Sir Lionel wrapped in an old dressing gown. Yes, and then? The light from a reading lamp shone down on him. It made a patch of light on the floor. Well, as my man Crockstead, his name, smashed the glass and got the window open and started climbing in, he saw something else, so he said. Oh? What did he see? A sort of green mist. He says it seemed to be alive, that he moved over the floor, going away from him and toward a curtain at the far end of the study. When did he first see this green mist? He says he thinks it came from the mummy case. And the mummy case? Yes. Well, he climbed in and turned the body over. Sir Lionel was quite dead. Then Croxted opened the glass door behind the curtain at the end of the study. It opened onto a conservatory filled with more junk. In there, he caught another glimpse of the crawling green mist and a dead Chinese. A Chinese, you say? Yes, Sir Lionel's body servant, I'm told. A doctor seen them? A local man, out of his depth, though. However, there's no need for another opinion until the coroner comes. And your man, Croxted? He held out until I came, gave me his story, and then fainted dead away. He said something in the conservatory seemed to get him by the throat. He meant that literally? I wouldn't say. We had to send him and the girl home in cab. What's your theory, Wayne? I have none. None that includes the green mist. Right. We'll go in now. This is the study where he worked. Good Lord, what a den. Uh, it is a bit of a mess, Doctor. How a man can work in a place littered with stuff from the four corners of the earth is a mystery to me. There's the body, Mr. Smith, by that big sarcophagus. We'll have a look. Weymouth! Petrie! Come here! Huh? Good. You don't know Sir Lionel by sight, Weymouth? No, I've never seen him. This is not Sir Lionel. It's Strasser, his Italian secretary. What? Are you certain? Why, of course. I met him only this afternoon. Where's the other, the Chinese? Here in the conservatory. We left him where we found him until you could see him, behind this curtain. Mm-hmm. That's Quee. Sir Lionel's body servant. One thing is quite evident, Weymouth. No one in the house except Strasser knew of Sir Lionel's absence. How do you arrive at that, Nayland? The servants we passed out there in the hall believe him dead. Had they seen him go out, they'd know it's someone else who lies here. Right. And what about the Chinese? Since there's no other way into this conservatory but through the study, Quee must have hidden himself here when Sir Lionel was out of the room. Croxted found the communicating door closed. What killed Quee? And both Miss Edwards and Croxted found the study door locked from the inside. What killed Strasser? Tell me that and you'll have your answer, Weymouth. Aye, hey, what killed Strasser? But why is he wearing Sir Lionel's dressing gown? Seeing him in that led Miss Edwards to mistake him for her employer and put us on the wrong scent. He wore it so that anyone looking in through the window would be sure to make the same mistake. Why so, Nayland? Why, look at these tools beside the mummy case. The lid off. Strasser came here to open the case. He was here when Sir Lionel told me a number of priceless jewels were probably secreted among the wrappings of the mummy. Ah, strange that Sir Lionel hadn't opened the case himself. He expected to do that tonight and examine its contents. Fortunate for him that he changed his mind. Then what became of the mummy? <laughs> it seems to have vanished in the form of a green mist. Look at Strasser's face and Queen's. What do they suggest? Mm, well, the features of both are terribly distorted. Even their limbs are twisted, suggesting a death more than ordinarily violent. I might guess at strangulation, but from what? Hey, from what? I'm with you so far, Mr. Smith. Knowing Sir Lionel was absent, Strasser locked himself in here to loot the mummy case. 
He couldn't have known the Chinese was hidden in the conservatory, though. And Kui didn't dare show himself because he, too, was there for some mysterious reason. Well, and having got the lid off, something, somebody... I suppose we say the mummy. Well, anyway, something that got out of the locked room without opening the door or window killed Strasser. And then killed the Chinese without opening the door behind which he lay concealed. The once Dr. Fu Manchu has employed an ally which even his giant will was unable to entirely control. Aye, uh, what blind force. What horrible agent of death could he have confined in that mummy case? If you're correct in your surmise, Nayland, that this is the work of Fu Manchu, his power is indeed superhuman. Can you doubt it, Petrie? The presence of a concealed Chinese is proof enough for me. I'll wager that Kui was one of Fu's murder group though probably only recently enlisted in that mysterious service. He's unarmed, or I might think that his part was to kill Sir Lionel while he was at work inspecting the mummy case. Strasser's opening the case completely spoiled the scheme. And led to the death of a servant of Fu Manchu? Mm. Yes. I'm at a loss to account for that. You think the sarcophagus entered into the scheme, Smith? You mean that its arrival at a time when a servant of Fu Manchu's... Kui was hidden here and may have been a coincidence? Uh, something like that. Oh, I'm afraid I'm as much in the dark there as you, Weymouth. If we knew the answer to that, we'd likely have the key to the entire riddle. Hmm. I wonder. Good heavens, what? One of Sir Lionel's applicant spears hurled through the window. It fairly missed you, Smith. Look there. Fasten to the hat. A folded paper. A note. Addressed to you, Smith. Oh. <laughs> you wanted proof, Petrie? Well, listen to this. Inspector Nayland Smith, your interference in my plans I shall tolerate no longer. Be warned. Dr. Fu Manchu. <laughs> Manchu, 